Guys, how are we doing? Welcome to Goodworks Tractors. If you're in the market for a tractor, maybe it's from me, maybe it's from a dealer in your neck of the woods, then pay attention. I've compiled, with your guys' help, the viewers' help, a top 10 list of regrets, things that other folks did when they bought their tractor that they wish they could change. Now, of all the regrets that folks had that they mentioned on Facebook and on YouTube, there was one that far and away stood out above the rest. It was also a very expensive mistake that they made. So make sure you stick around to the end. I'm gonna save it for last. I am proud to let you guys know I am sponsored by Bora Wheel Spacers. If you want some stability for your tractor, you're feeling a little tippy side to side, check out Bora. They have a lot of solutions, steel or aluminum, one to six inches in width. Could be for your tractor, maybe it's for your truck or a UTV. Gonna be a link down below in the description. Bora Wheel Spacers, check them out. And if you enjoyed this video, I would love to get a thumbs up from you. Thumbs up right down below. Hit that subscribe button and make sure you check out everything over at goodworkstractors.com. We've added all sorts of attachments in the last few weeks. We keep on adding more as well. So if you haven't been there lately, you want to head back over and see what's new. Alrighty guys, I've got a list here, 10. Well, there's a lot more than 10, I should say, but I've compiled it down, the top 10 most popular regrets that folks had buying them. You know, if you are a tractor dealer, or maybe you have a sales team, this is probably a good one to share with your team because these are real folks that bought tractors that wish they did something different or their salesman told them something different. Let's get to it. We're gonna start off with the doozy one that kinda caught me off guard, but it was quite a common theme. Had all sorts of likes and thumbs up on the, uh, the individual's posts that made it as well. Mid-mount mowers, the belly mowers, that go right down underneath here. That was a huge regret that folks had. You know, they wish they spent the money on a zero turn, maybe a rear finish mower, maybe a vacation, I don't know. But something besides getting this mid-mount mower underneath. Didn't get a whole lot of detail into it. I guess if I was going to assume something, it's because the inconvenience of having to take the loader off, put the mower deck on, reverse that process when you want to go from mowing the lawn to doing something with the loader or the three-point or the backhoe, there's a bit of a transition there. Maybe five to ten minutes uh, setting it up one way and then transitioning back to the other way, but time is valuable and I'm sure to some extent it depends on the area that you're mowing because probably not as nimble as a smaller lawn mower or a zero turn of course so that could play into it as well and the fact that these mower decks literally they can cost three four five six grand depending on the machine you have that is a huge chunk of money for something sitting underneath your tractor that doesn't have its own engine on it and there's not a lot of space underneath the tractor anyway so if you can imagine putting another six or seven inches uh, height of the mower deck and the mounting mechanism underneath here you're going to be tempted to want to leave that on but you can't get it up off the ground very far so very minimal ground clearance could be potentially very easy to damage something whether it's a deck uh, the attaching mechanism or maybe a gauge wheel so you want to take that belly mower off it is an inconvenience i think that's probably why a lot of folks regret getting it next up i gotta say i'm proud of you guys ballast weight you were all over it in your dealer not recommending, mentioning it, doing anything about ballast weight. You get the tractor home, you're starting to pick up stuff with the front end loader, the back end starting to raise off the ground, you're wondering what's going on. That's the exact point, the exact reason you need counterweight on the back side of the machine. It's right in the manual, guys. You know, I mentioned this in a previous video, a lot of previous videos, but when you're budgeting for your tractor, it's not just the tractor, you gotta plan for the other stuff as well, and ballast weight is a big consideration. You're not really doing work with that weight, whether it's suitcase weights or a ballast box or liquid ballast in the tires or wheel weights, any form that you have. However, it's gonna allow you to operate more safely and more efficiently because you're gonna be planted to the ground all the time. So I'm normally running either a ballast box on the back end or it could be one of those weight brackets uh, like from Heavy Hitch or from Titan with a bunch of suitcase weights. But not only that, I do have liquid ballast there's actual liquid inside these tires that is really cheap. It's a very cheap form of ballast weight to get. I've done a video, a couple videos, all about ballast weight, the best forms of it. So with this tractor, a subcompact, the John Deere 1025R, the smallest of tractors that you can get, it still requires 1,050 pounds of ballast weight. And you can't get that just with one type or one form. You're gonna have to do something back here in the three point, something on the wheels or inside the wheels as well. Attachments were a big hitter, in particular pallet forks, but attachments kind of as a general theme. You know, but everything for the front end, yeah, your pallet forks up here, maybe a stump bucket like what you see, could be a quick hitch on the backside, I saw that called out a couple times, but your snowblower, your rear blade, anything you can think of, 
the general theme was a lot of folks wish they got that and included it in their financing up front. It's a lot easier just to kind of have that one monthly payment instead of paying cash out of pocket for different attachments down the road. Though I don't mind that too much and you know where to go, goodworkstractors.com if you need something for your machine. Now there are going to be situations where you don't want to get those attachments from John Deere or Kubota or Massey or whoever it is. You know they're not always going to have the best value, it could be a lot more money, maybe it doesn't have the features you want. The Spico quick hitch you see back here, it doesn't use bushings, for example. So the bushings that you have to size up for every three-point attachment that you put on a traditional iMatch or maybe a Land Pride quick hitch, you don't need to do so on this. So you save a lot of money down the road. This stump bucket, for example, I have it for a John Deere quick attach or a Skid Steer quick attach. It's my own design. There's not really anything else out there that you can just take your bucket off and put this on and get to work with it. There's some other systems that are out there, some that are way bigger for really big tractors, but if you're looking for something for a small tractor, it's a great solution. I can help you out with that. But the point being, there's certain items like these that you can't get from your dealer. You know, I sell a ton of HLA snow pushers, in my opinion, a lot better than the Frontier to the Land Prize of the world just because of their design. I've done all sorts of videos about it. That's kind of the nice thing about being independent is that i can kind of cherry pick from different manufacturers i won't carry entire lineups i'll just cherry pick the good stuff that i think is the best value of not only pricing but features and quality as well okay we're part way through we've eliminated some possibilities on those potential big regrets we're narrowing it down we're getting closer to that biggest regret that almost 25 percent of survey respondents said was on their list you think you have an idea what it is stay tuned we'll get to it soon a little bit of tractor education Basic operation, understanding how your machine turns on, moves around. That was severely lacking, dealers, if you're watching this. And fortunately, there's a lot of channels out there on YouTube. There's a lot of helpful information on forums where you can get quickly educated and brought up to speed. But I do feel like there should be some basic level of an overview of the machine so you know what you're doing, how to safely maybe get it off your trailer at your house or maybe safely like we talked about with ballast weight, use it. Just the basic fundamentals so you can kind of get to work and figure out what a little knob here or there does down the road. That's really one of the reasons I got into making YouTube videos was really to answer those questions that I was getting asked repeatedly, you know, over and over from customers. And I thought I could try to help out and make videos about different aspects of a tractor. Don't feel like you shouldn't ask the question of how do I do this and how do I do that and ask the same question over and over or even record them telling you as they give you an overview of your new machine. You wanna make sure you know what you're doing. There's no shame in that. If your salesman doesn't know what he's doing, don't hesitate to ask and see if he can get some help from another salesman to show you what all the knobs and bells and whistles are. Another hot button for a lot of you folks were going to be options. Whether it was adding on options that you didn't need and they didn't tell you anything about it, or maybe not even going over all the available options for your machine. That's an important one, folks, because a lot of these things are going to be a lot cheaper to do up front than to do down the road. A lot of different things that maybe you do or don't know about, but perhaps it could be a deluxe grill guard, it could be an air ride seat upgrade, maybe even work lights for up on the ROP system, or potentially even different loader models that are available for different series of tractors. You don't know unless you ask, so it helps to do your research ahead of time if you can, but go in there and say, hey, show me what the price is with this and without it, and how much can I cross off if I don't get that, or is it even an option? And one of the biggest mistakes that's an option, but only up front when you're buying the tractor new is going to be an OEM factory cab that has air conditioning and heat. You know, the John Deere 1025 does have a Mauser cab. They do call that a factory cab because it can be installed at the factory. In my mind, it's not the same as a true cab that's built with the structure of the tractor and has air conditioning as well. That's a big key difference there. You cannot add that on to any tractor after the fact. So while some of these options may be fairly small in the monetary sense, you know, an option like a cab could add potentially six, eight, 10 grand to your overall purchase. So they can have a small impact, a big impact. Just make sure you have all the information available to you. You know, something that I was a little disappointed to see, but there weren't as many responses as I thought there might have been, was actually not having a quick attach bucket. And that means you couldn't put this stump bucket on, you couldn't put a set of pallet forks on, you couldn't put a snow pusher on, you couldn't put a grapple on. You'd be stuck with the one bucket that you have on here with no easy way to take it off and buy an attachment from anybody else, me or your dealer, and put it back on there. There's no way to do that. So nowadays, John Deere is pretty much going to include their own style of quick attach, the JDQA, you'll hear it called pretty much on every tractor that they have. 
Some other brands are starting to go that direction, but it's not standard. You're gonna see typically an extra line item on there, maybe five, six, seven hundred bucks to add that quick attach, normally a skid steer quick attach. Unfortunately, I feel like certain manufacturers, there's LS and I think there's a Massey one as well that have their own version of a quick attach, which is not standardized. There's not a lot of available attachments on the market. So it's proprietary, I guess, the same way that the John Deere Quick Attach is proprietary. But the difference with John Deere is that I can sell you a Skitcher Quick Attach or a John Deere Quick Attach bucket for the exact same price. Last year, I had a guy that wanted to get a snow pusher, okay, for his LS tractor with its own proprietary LS Quick Attach system that resulted in an additional upcharge for that style. The same thing can be said for the Massey system as well. Unfortunately, on this list, it's pretty common as well. It made the list of why people uh, sell their low hour tractors is getting the wrong size tractor to begin with. So I would really encourage you when you are tractor shopping to have that list of tasks, you know, of activities that you plan to do with a tractor. A lot of those can be accomplished with any size machine. A 1025 like this one here can do a lot of things that my big four series tractor can do. It's just going to take longer and there are going to be specific activities that i can't do with this 1025 that my four series can or maybe that a three series can and that's going to be something like lifting a round bale with the front end loader so that's something that a round bale let's just say it weighs 800 pounds this tractor can't lift 800 pounds you know that's the load center is two foot out from it there's no way that's going to happen and if you have to lift it off of a trailer haul it out to your field or whatever the case is you're not gonna be able to do that with this tractor. But on the flip side, maybe you're doing it commercially, you have to go through a lot of gates in the backyards of residential developments. Something like my four series is gonna be too large, so you need something smaller. Maybe not a, a one series, but maybe a two or a three series, something with a narrower footprint to be able to get through those backyard gates. So there's a lot of reasons for maybe buying the wrong size tractor, and while in this survey, the biggest regret was not getting big enough. Maybe you do need something smaller. The one reason I'll say is more common for not buying big enough to begin with is because generally, the bigger you go, the more expensive it is. So you're trying to save money because you're on a budget up front and you just want to stick to that budget. However, if that means a year from now, you're selling that tractor, losing money when you're selling it or trading it in. Same thing with the attachments. You got to get bigger attachments, bigger tractor. All you're doing is really costing yourself more money down the road. What are you doing, buddy? Huh? Come on. Hey, you come here? Hey, where are you going? Sorry. Where are you going? Come on. Come on. Come on Let's get go. Over here. Get over here. Come on. Sorry. Oh, you're fine. Come on, get over. A pretty common theme where the rubber meets the road. A lot of regrets there on getting the wrong style of tire or tread pattern up front. This is not something you want to mess up. It is really costly to fix this down the road. Sometimes it's not just the tires, but the wheels as well that you have to replace. And now when I say up front, I mean the time of purchase, not just the front axle. But you have a lot of tire options to go through. This style here is becoming more and more popular. It's gonna be a radial style. On the smaller tractors, it's gonna be the Carlisle VersaTurf. As you get into the larger machines, the two, three, four series, or the equivalents of other manufacturers, you're gonna see the Goodyear slash Titan R14 tread pattern. Essentially the same thing, slightly different, but it's a very good hybrid tire. It takes a lot of properties from your traditional ag tire, the R4 and even the turf and kind of merges them all together. You can see we're on a lawn and these are just fine on here, but they're great on, on packed snow and on ice and dirt and mud. So a lot of good properties, very good wearability, good traction in different situations. So if you have the opportunity to decide on a new or a used tractor, see if you can find a way to get different tires or the tires you want negotiated into the deal. Okay, before we get to that biggest regret, the most expensive one, I actually want to switch modes and give some compliments to folks that were so prepared they had no regrets at all because they went into the purchase doing a lot of research right on YouTube like what you're watching now or on tractor forums or just reading through literature, talking to their dealer, having a good dealer, a good salesman for all sorts of answers, you know, Q&A just to get the right decision the first time. So that is really nice to see one of the most popular responses being I had no regrets at all. Okay, so we're at the doozy. This was probably nearly 25% of the responses either liked this or made a comment explicitly about this, and that is gonna be hydraulics. 
and not just the hydraulics to make your loader go up and down and curl and roll, but that's the extra hydraulics to be able to run a grapple, you know, open and close that up front or angle a snow plow, or maybe it's on the back side, wanting to run a hydraulic top and a tilt kit, or maybe have a snow blower on the back with a hydraulic chute rotation. There were even some folks that wanted to have an independent uh, mower deck lift system. So you hydraulically raise and lower your mower deck instead of using the same control that's going to raise and lower your three point. That's the traditional way to raise and lower your mower deck is using that same lever to raise and lower your three point. So if you have, I don't know, a ballast box or you have a, a bagger or a seed spreader or something else on the back, that's going to go up and down the same time as the mower deck is. So having those independent controls to operate the mid and the rear is going to help out with that. In fact, there's so many reasons that you want to have an additional hydraulic option on your tractor that I made an entire video all about it earlier this year, 15 reasons that you want a third function on your machine. However, if you got yourself into a situation with a tractor that doesn't have the third function, the additional ports on the front of the back, we've got a solution for you. It's a DIY solution. You can do it yourself. And even if you're considering getting those OEM hydraulics, you may want to look into this. It's going to be the Summit Hydraulics Diverter Kits, rear multipliers, all sorts of options that are available for the homeowner to do themselves. Typically somewhere in the 25 to 50% cost range compared to having a dealer do it. So if you are on a tight budget, you can save a lot of money using a solution from Summit Hydraulics and you can save even more using code GWT to save 5% off of your order. So we've done video overviews explaining how to install this diverter kit and product overviews on the hydraulic multipliers on the back as well. If you need to have a lot of additional hydraulic options, there's cheaper ways to go about doing it besides getting the factory, the OEM solutions. However, that was far and away the biggest regret that folks had. And you go into a tractor purchase, most of us do, it's a first time purchase when you realize, or maybe you don't realize, that's a better thing, what you're really gonna do with the tractor or what the tractor can do for you. And after you own it for a little while and you start to kind of get more acclimated with how to use it and operate it and do more research on the different attachments that are available, your eyes are opened on everything you can get for this tractor and how much more efficiently you can get your work done. I think the biggest takeaway from all this is the fact that no matter what you do, you're gonna have some sort of regret. I think a little bit of that is inevitable because it's very hard to get one machine that maybe does every single thing you want. So you kinda gotta make a priority list, you know, just get those big hitters that you want crossed off and that way if there's something more towards the bottom that maybe your dream machine doesn't have, it's not that big of a deal. So hopefully this video, what you took away from it and what everybody else contributed to help make it possible will help you out in your future purchase. I wanna thank you so much for taking the time to stop by. I would love to get a thumbs up from you. Make sure you hit that subscribe button right down below and head on over to goodworkstractors.com. We do sell nice, clean, low hour use tractors there and all sorts of brand new attachments. We ship them all over the country, all the time. So thanks again and until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.